today we're using as a catch-up day for everybody to get caught up to where we are on notes to this point. And then tomorrow we'll start on another day. Uh, due to the snow day last Thursday and us not staying on pace with our notes, you will not be having a test this week. But I guarantee you'll have one next week over what we've covered up to this point since the first of the semester. And it will probably be, I'm guessing, it depends on how this week goes. It'll either be Tuesday. Y'all don't be looking at those. I didn't realize I had them up there. It'll either be Tuesday or Wednesday, but I'm shooting for Tuesday. That's what I'm shooting for. Really sweet so are y'all the one that got to 1010 10, or 1033? Because there was a class I told to write down 1033. And why did y'all tell me y'all finished this? When did we tell you that? Wednesday. See, we weren't here on Thursday. I don't remember. Alright, it's alright. It's alright. We'll just, the other seventh hour is still behind. So they needed to catch up day anyway. So it's all going to work out good. All right, so y'all did this one. Did y'all do fungi? No. All right, so this is where we are at. So 
Jen's writers are leaving the cast tomorrow. They're like, she's coming to our school? Okay, they are decomposers, we know that. They reproduce by spores and they have cell walls made of chitin. Plants, they are eukaryotic, they are multicellular, they are autotrophic, which means they make their food through photosynthesis. And they are cell walls and they are a substance called cellular. And if we didn't have plants, would we exist? No. No. Ah. Uh, so plants are holotrophics. They make their own pho food through photosynthesis. They have cell walls. Remember, cell, the cells of plants have a cell membrane and a cell wall. The cells of animals just not have a cell wall. They only have a cell membrane. questions up to this point. And then after that, it's broke down to mammals. I mean, it's broke down to humans eventually through the breakdown. But as a kingdom itself, we don't have our own kingdom. This is the kingdom that we belong to.
you know, at some point during their life cycle, if you plug this to me during their life cycle, they do not have cell walls, they only have cell membranes. So here's a sort of little chart if you want to use that to help you answer number seven. So moving on to modern taxonomy. So we've added a new component into how we classify things, and that is with the context of evolution, a really important uh, aspect of classification. Scientists use a variety of information in order to classify organisms. They use morphology, in other words, their anatomy, which we've already talked about, the biological macromolecules, so we're going to bring this one just write the three and the points down at the bottom and see so if you by morphology, the by classifying by morphology, they're basing their class. So moving on to modern taxonomy. So just write down the one, two, and three and skip a, a few pace, places between them so you can write information down on them. There's a whole lot of note taken on them, but there is a little. Mm -mm. We won't take notes on fossil record, but you, because we've already taken notes on fossil record, what a fossil record is in previous days. But you need to know that that's one of the ways that they use to classify organisms is through the fossil record. We've added a new component into how we classify things, and that is with the context of evolution, a really important uh, aspect of classification. Scientists use a variety of information in order to classify organisms. They use morphology, in other words, their anatomy, which we've already talked about. You know that morphology is the study of anatomy or has to do with a, 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 an organism's anatomy. attention to it because you might see a graph that's asking questions and we'll be, I'll ask you a question here in a minute over it. Um, Open protein. We would on your test, when we take that new test at the end of the semester. And your, and their amino acid sequence. But a human and a dog only have 32. So we would say that a human and a dog are more closely related than a human and a lamprey. So comparison of macromolecules such as proteins and DNA, organisms with more similar sequences are considered more closely related. All right, going back to that chart, leaving out the human, which two animals of the other four are closest, the closest related on this chart according to the amino acids that it has? Dog and bear. Maddie. Dog and bear. The dog and the bird. Did you say bear? Bird. Yes. How did you figure that, Maddie? Did you do a mathematical way to figure it, or did you just look at the distance between the lines? Mathematical. So you took, so, and guys, a lot of these charts that you're gonna have on that test, you're gonna have to use some math. I mean, it's simple math, but you're gonna have to use some. So, um, 
because these are never drawn to scale, which means they're never perfect, right? So that's the reason you have to use your numbers. So you took 45 minus 30, 32, and that is a fewer numbers, right? Then eight and 32, or 45 and 67, right? If you subtract those. So they see how you would do that mathematically and not by just looking at the distance between them. Because this line and this line, they don't look that far apart, do they? They look about the same, right? There should be, like this should have a bigger gap than that one has. And it has a little bit, but not very much. Did you see that? Anybody notice that? So just remember your graphs and stuff are not drawn to scale and you've got to pay attention to the numbers, not necessarily how far apart it looks like the lines are, okay? Any questions on that? Did anybody come up with anything else other than dog or bird? So here are some macro molecules such as proteins and DNA. Organisms with more similar sequences are considered more closely related. And then we also use these fossil records. So we look at how the through the fossil record. And we know that fossils found in closer layers are typically going to be considered more closely related species because the layers um, can give us an idea of their age, right? Older organisms are going to be found in the deeper layers of the fossil record. More recent organisms are going to be found closer to the surface. Another type of graph. This is kind of like that family tree I was telling you about. Kind of looks like a family tree. Phylogeny is the science of evolutionary history. All right, so we need to know that biolo biology is the scientific study of evolution. History. Evolutionary history. It's the only thing on the screen you have to write down. History. So that's what we're showing in cladistics with a cladogram. We're showing what characteristics they share, what characteristics are unique to them, and then therefore how are they related in terms of evolution. So look at this this um, cladogram right here. This would be the characteristic that is shared by everything above it. So everything except for our amphibian has an amniotic egg. Everything above here have hair. So dinosaurs, birds, crocodiles, turtles, and amphibians do not have hair. These are called derived characteristics. So fill in your example here on your notes organizer. A vertebrae would be our ancestral characteristic because it's the, the characteristic that our ancestor had that is shared by all of the organisms in our cladogram. These would all be considered derived characteristics. Bony skeleton, fuller limbs, amniotic egg, hair, so on and so forth. The vertebrae is our ancestral characteristic. And then last, we have dichotomous keys. Dichotomous keys are a tool that allows the user to confirm the identity of an item or organism based on its characteristics. The word dichotomous means cut in two parts. Di, two, hot, the, cut. So divided in two parts. Um, and then the dichotomous key, you're always given two choices. So let's say you're outside and you come across a leaf. And you want to know what kind of tree did this leaf come from? You could use a dichotomous key to identify the tree that that leaf came from. You would read a statement and you would follow the steps of that statement based on the leaf that you're trying to identify. So, some things to keep in mind, you're going to make a dichotomous key. Characteristics should be characteristics that stay the same. So don't necessarily say like, this leaf has a tear on it. Because that leaf is not always going to have a tear on it. That particular leaf might have a tear on it. But not all of that kind of leaf is going to have hair on it. You get what I'm saying? And so saying things like large or small, use specific measurements. Try to make the choice of positive one, meaning it is instead of it's not. If you can, not always, that's okay. If possible, start both choices of a pair with the same word. Finish the dichotomous keys with the identity of that organism. And if done correctly, here's the trick. You should have one less step than the number of organisms you're trying to identify. So if you're trying to identify 10 organisms, you should have nine steps in your dichotomous key. So here we go, 10 organisms, two, four, six, eight, 10. We have nine steps, okay? Each one has a choice. So I'm trying to identify C, I would go. All right, so this is 
a diameter of key. And um, you'll see this in science, both plant and biology, animal science. Um, but you also will see it out in the real world. Um, it uh, was uh, like on the census, when you fill out your census, it'll say, if you don't have any children living at home, then go to this number. If you do, go to the next number or skip this number and go to that number. So like this says, whisker light barrels presented on the head, catfish, go to two. So if it did have the whiskers, then you'd go to question two. If it didn't have the whiskers, you would go to question three. You see how that works? All right. And then, and then uh, also on um, doctor paper, sometimes you'll see that. Um, if you have any history of cancer in your family, um, answer question one. If not, go to question five. Uh, you also have it on your tax reforms. They have questions there that's like that. If you had this, if this box is more than $5,000, then go to question 10. If not, you go to question 15. And those aren't the right numbers on the tax form and stuff. But, they're, but you see these type of keys um, out in the real world too, not just in science when they're categorizing. So you need to be aware of that, these type of keys. Um, there's a good chance that you'll have to do one of these when I'm gone. It's gonna depend on how many days I'm gone and where we're at in lessons. But I think it would be a good for you to do. We'll see. I don't know how long I'm going to be gone. I don't know how the weather's going to affect us this week. Like a cheese zero in your venture. Remember those being those books when you were a cute kid? And then eventually you should come across the name of that particular fish. You're trying to identify an unknown organism. So, so the last thing I want you to do today is there's a very simple dichotomy key on your notes organizer. I want you to complete it. I promise you it's easier okay. than it looks. So try and figure so out. So that is the notes for today. That gets y'all caught up. Um, and then tomorrow we'll start talking about how technology has allowed us to um, modify some genetics.